like every time I think I've got a handle on what's happening in AI, something comes along and just uh, blows everything up, you yeah. know? And that's kind of what we're looking at today with this company, DeepSeek. Right. They've done something truly remarkable, I think. Oh, it's not just remarkable. It's um, it's potentially a total game changer. Okay, so set the scene for us. What what did DeepSeek pull off here? Well, they managed to train a massive language model. Okay. We're talking 671 billion parameters. Whoa. And, and just to put that in perspective, you can think of each parameter as a tiny control knob that fine tunes how this AI thinks. Okay. So 671 billion, that's a lot of knobs. Yeah, a lot of knobs to tweak. And they trained this behemoth 10 times faster than giants like Meta, which is just... Ten times. Ten times faster. So that's like compressing a month's worth of work into, what, three days? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's got to be some seriously powerful secret sauce they're using, right? It's not really a secret sauce so much as a completely different approach to the hardware itself. Oh, interesting. They used NVIDIA H800 GPUs, which are the current top of the line. The best of the best? Absolutely. But they didn't stop there. Instead of relying on the standard CUDA software, they went a level deeper using something called PTX. PTX, okay. It's like having a world-class mechanic who, instead of just doing a standard tune-up, completely rebuilds your engine for ultimate performance. So they weren't satisfied with just having the supercar engine. They had to tinker with it yes. to squeeze out every last drop of power. Exactly. Now, I'm starting to see why everyone's freaking out about this. Yeah. But uh, I got to be honest, PTX... C-U-D. It all sounds a bit like alphabet soup to me. Sure. Can you break down for me what that shift actually means? Absolutely. Yeah. Imagine C-U-D-A as a high-level language. Okay. It gets the job done, but it's working with the engine as a whole. Mm. PTX lets you get down to the individual components, queaking each part for maximum efficiency. So they really were like getting in there with a fine-tooth comb. That's a great way to put it. it and not just software tricks, right? I read that they actually rejiggered the hardware itself. They did. Taking 20 out of the 132 processing units and dedicating them solely to communication between servers. That's right. That's pretty radical. I mean, what made them even think to do that? Well, it speaks volumes about DeepSeek's ingenuity. They were facing the same global GPU shortage as everyone else. Right, of course. So they had to get creative. Okay. And essentially, they turned a portion of the GPU into a superhighway for data. Oh, I see. Which is incredibly important when you're dealing with the massive amounts of information these large language models have to process. It's like turning a back road into a six-lane freeway. Exactly. They needed to get that data moving as quickly as possible. Makes sense. And they found a very clever way to do it. So they took this super powerful GPU and turned a chunk of it into basically a data express lane. Right. That's pretty wild. I guess it makes sense that would speed things up, but nah. but was it really worth all the effort? I mean, the results really speak for themselves, right? Yep. That 10x speed increase, that's not just some impressive number. Right. It translates to massive real-world savings. Oh, yeah. How so? Well, think about it. Building a data center for, say, $2 billion instead of $10 billion. Okay, yeah. Now you're talking my language. That's the kind of impact we're talking about. Oh, that's huge. Huge. But I imagine this kind of optimization has to be incredibly complex, right? It's definitely not easy. Like, could other companies even try to replicate what DeepSeek did? That's where DeepSeek's real expertise comes in. Okay. They haven't just, you know, thrown together some quick hack. You're right. Sure. This is a fundamental rethinking of how to actually utilize AI hardware. So they're like master craft people yeah. taking this block of marble and sculpting something truly unique. Precisely. It takes incredible skill and vision. It's pretty clear they've made a splash. I mean, when the news about what DeepSeek did broke, yeah. NVIDIA's stock took a real nosedive. Oh, yeah. Investors were spooked. I guess they were worried companies wouldn't need to buy as much expensive hardware anymore. Well, I understand the market reaction. Yeah. But I think that's a pretty short-sighted view. Really? Why is that? Well. People like Pat Gelsinger, former CEO of Intel. Oh, wow. Okay. He sees this as a really positive thing. Interesting. His view is AI will always demand more power. Okay. That makes sense. But what DeepSeek's approach does is it could make that power more accessible. So instead of just a few giant companies with tons of money dominating AI. Exactly. This could open things up for smaller players, even individual researchers, to get involved. Precisely. It's like leveling the playing field. I love that. And that can lead to just an explosion of new ideas and innovations. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. More people playing in the sandbox. One of our readers made a point that really stuck with me. Huh? They said, 
even if this level of optimization is super tough to maintain, right. that 10x efficiency game is just a total game changer. They were like, why spend 10 billion when you can achieve the same thing with two? It's hard to argue with that logic. Yeah. And it brings up another interesting question. What's that? If DeepSea can do this, uh -huh. what other unconventional approaches are out there? Right. What other breakthroughs are we missing? Because we're not thinking outside the box enough. Yeah, it's like DeepSeek found this hidden door that no one even knew existed. It is. And now we're all wondering what else might be behind it. That's a great way to put it. Mm. And it ties into another great point one of our readers made. Oh, yeah. What was that? They suggested that maybe the AI industry has been too focused on just throwing more and more powerful hardware at every problem. Okay. Maybe we need to be looking more closely at the software side of things, like DeepSeek did. To find ways to optimize what we already have. Exactly. We've been so busy building bigger and faster cars right. that we forgot to make sure the engine is actually running efficiently. Mm, it's funny how that happens, right? It is. It is. And, and you know, that brings us to another important part of all this, oh. AI hallucinations. Oh, yeah. We've all seen those examples where an AI spits out something totally nonsensical. Oh, absolutely. Like that time an AI claimed Marie Antoinette never had a biological mother. Exactly. I remember that one. It was hilarious, but also kind of unsettling. Right. Like, are we pushing AI too far too fast? It's a valid concern. Yeah. And it's something that researchers are working on. Okay. But the good news is... These models are getting better all the time. That's good to hear. And the more we actually understand how this technology works yeah. at every level, right. the better equipped we are to make good decisions about how it's used. So even if we don't all need to become expert coders, right. just understanding these basic concepts behind AI. It helps us be more critical consumers of the technology. Yeah, that makes sense. We can separate the hype from reality, ask the right questions, and really advocate for responsible AI development. Right. So DeepSeek's story is a reminder that innovation can come from unexpected places. Absolutely. They weren't afraid to challenge the status quo, and the results are pretty remarkable. Yeah, and that's the beauty of the AI field. It's constantly evolving, always pushing boundaries. Makes you wonder what other groundbreaking discoveries are just waiting out there. Maybe the next DeepSeek is out there right now, just waiting to emerge. That's a pretty exciting thought. It is. But before we get too carried away dreaming about the future of AI, <laughs> let's take a moment to recap what we've learned today. Sure. We started by diving into DeepSeek's incredible achievement, training this massive language model 10 times faster than anyone thought possible. Yeah, 10 times. That number's still blowing my mind. Right. And we talked about how they did it, this radical new approach to both hardware and software. Rewriting the rules. E exactly. And then we discussed the impact this could have. You know, making AI more accessible, maybe sparking a whole new wave of innovation. Yeah, it's really exciting to think about. It is. It is. Yeah. And we also touched on the importance of understanding the tech behind AI. Right. Even if you're not a computer scientist. Right. Because knowing how things work allows you to be a more informed consumer of the technology. Which is so crucial in a world where AI is just becoming more and more a part of our lives. Absolutely. And finally, you know, we ended on a note of optimism, acknowledging the deep seek story is just one chapter in this larger story of AI. Right. A story that's still being written. Exactly. It's like everyone's looking for the next big thing in AI. But what deep seek showed us is that maybe the real magic is in how we use the tools we already have. Yeah, I think you're right. Sometimes the most groundbreaking stuff isn't about inventing something totally new, but about finding a different way to use what already exists. I exactly. It's like, um, it reminds me of how people used to think the only way to get faster internet was to keep laying down more fiber optic cables. Oh, I see what you mean. And then all these advancements in data compression and signal processing came along and revolutionized speeds without having to dig up every street in the country. Right. And that's what makes what DeepSeek did so interesting. Yeah. They showed us that there's still so much room for creativity and innovation, even in a field as technical as AI. So as we wrap up our deep dive here... What's the one thing you really hope our listeners take away from this? Don't be afraid to question assumptions. Oh. Just because everyone else is doing things one way doesn't mean there isn't a better, more efficient, or more creative way to do it. Like, there's always another way to look at a problem. Exactly. It's like progress often comes from people who are willing to challenge how things are usually done. 
and explore new possibilities. Precisely. So who knows? Maybe one of our listeners will be the one to uncover the next hidden gem in AI. I hope so. Or in any field that really excites them. The key is to just stay curious, keep learning, and never stop asking questions. Couldn't have said it better myself.